Corey Kroll here with another live time training video. This video goes over the race screen, the things that you can set up and do prior to running the race, and what you can do during the race. So let's start by taking a look at the race screen as it stands. I'm in race two of the first qualifying round as shown here, and I've already run the first race of the round. So I go back here and you can see the results are already in. So now on race two, um, all the drivers are marked in red. This is because none of the races have actually gone over the loop yet to check in. I'm going to check in myself right now to give you an idea of what that looks like. Corey Kroll. So once I've gone over the loop, uh, it highlights myself, announces my name, and the line item here is white instead of red. Your goal is to get everyone to go over the loop and check in before the race begins, though you can start the race without um, having everyone check in first. While you're getting ready for the race to begin, you may also want to know who should be marshalling or who's in the next race. So in the upper right corner here, there's a tool section. If you hit on show and then select the marshal tool, you'll see these are the people that ran the last race. So you can get them in position. Also, if you want to announce who's coming up, you can choose the next race tool here and the people that are in the next race will show up as well. The last item is estimated position, which before you start a race, isn't very interesting unless you just want to look at what the results are so far and talk about them. But as the race uh, progresses, it actually will give a live view of if the people in the current race keep their current pace, where will they end up at rank? Uh, the best thing to note right now is that the people that are in the current race are the ones that are highlighted. Everyone else either is in a race before or after this one in the round. I'll hide that for now and then I'll show it later again as the race is progressing give you a better idea. Now before the race begins if you want to reorganize any of the columns that are at the top here you can do it. So if I'm interested in perhaps seeing the top three consecutive laps uh, as the race progresses I can just drag it and drop it and here we go. I can also resize any of the columns. I can do this once the race begins too. Just thought I'd demonstrate it prior. Also, uh, because I went over the loop with a transponder, and my transponder happens to be a newer one, I can get some extra metrics. Uh, I can take a look at what my signal strength is, my number of hits. Uh, this is also voltage and temperature. If you're ever wondering what any of these icons mean, just move your mouse over it, and you'll get a little tooltip to let you know. So for those that know uh, what a strong or weak signal might be, you can look at this and give information to drivers prior to the race beginning if you'd like. On the left hand side we demonstrate and or show rather the transponder. If they have a car ID you'll see a slash in the car ID number next to it. Also the frequency they're running at. This gray bar is going to start working once the race begins. It's an estimate of uh, where they are on the track based on their average. Alright, I believe I'm ready to go. Uh, one last thing before starting the race. At the bottom here, here's all the settings. Do I want to run this race with minutes or laps? You'll notice that things change along the top if I adjust it. I'm going to run a race based on time. Here's my minimum lap. Anything under this lap, uh, the row will flash red instead of yellow, and the lap won't be counted. So make sure that you set this lap appropriately. Um, this is really important if you have a track where the driver comes back around, gets close to the loop, and may accidentally trigger it um, to make sure that it is large enough so that that gets dismissed. You can also set the heat length here. We're at a five minute. If I, I can change it here on the fly, six minutes, seven minutes. You'll notice that the time left changes here, ready to go. I'll set it back to five. You can adjust that during the race. And if I want a heads up or a staggered start, if I'm running a main, it won't even give me the option. It must be a heads up, but a stagger or heads up is available if you're running a practice or qualifying round. Okay, I'm ready to start. I'm going to go ahead and start the race. And as people go across the loop, you'll notice that uh, their individual clock has started. This is a staggered race, meaning that everyone starts at their own timer. Uh, and everyone gets the full five minutes and once they uh, cross a lap after their five minutes uh, their clock is done. So I'm going to simulate um, first laps coming over. Uh, you'll notice there's nothing in the top three yet that's because they haven't done three laps and when that happens that will populate. I can go ahead and I can change other things around. I can resize things if I'd like to as well. Um, all this is dynamic as the race is progressing. 
You'll also notice on the left hand side some additional indicators. Uh, the qu top qualifying position here, this is where they're currently ranked. If I go ahead and show this, this is even more detailed. You'll notice that no one's really running a very fast uh, race quite yet. The people who ran the first race uh, had better results. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and simulate that the next time around here, okay, everyone did a really fast lap, and you'll notice that everyone's time now on pace is better and it will beat everyone that was in the first race, so it gets sorted below here. So you can kind of watch that and get an idea um, that if people stay on course, uh, where they'll rank. I'm going to let Bob here go a little bit past his average. You know he's in the red, meaning that he, uh, on average, should have passed the loop by then. And you'll notice that after he passed, he's now in seventh place because his pace is falling behind and is now below everyone else. But now I just hit it again, and it's popped back up. So things have changed throughout the course of the race. This is an interesting tool to watch, especially if you're a race director. Now as the race is progressing, um, I'm going to not have Bob cross over the loop. Um, this is going to simulate a break. So let's say Bob just uh, is off the track right now, and that's that. As laps continue to go across uh, the loop, uh, Bob is obviously kind of falling behind anyways. Um, but eventually, the system is going to mark him in red as a break, saying he's, it's been way too long, he's more than two, time, two laps as average, um, and it goes red. At that point, the system will assume that he's off the track and done for the race. And you'll notice his pace changes to uh, 6 and a 129, basically assuming that he is good, you know, gone off the track for good, and that's going to be his final resort. However, that doesn't mean that Bob can't get back on the track. If he does, um, he'll just have a really large lap, and I'll simulate that now, but he's back on. And the system goes back to estimating his pace and sorting him appropriately. You'll notice that his, his lap is in red, showing, hey, this is a very suspicious lap. It's way off his pace. Um, it's really just for the race director to note. Now, at any point, you can go into any one of these laps that's on the list. It always shows the most recent 10 laps, and you can right-click and you can either delete the lap or you can add a manual lap. So let's say this 15 is suspect for Brandon and I want to just delete this, this lap. I can just do it. You'll notice that what ends up happening is that the next lap is much larger. It recalculates the, the rest of the laps and everything resorts. So these are things you can do dynamically while the race is running. Um, you'll also notice that there's plenty of other columns and information to take a look at. Um, you can also see the time behind. Uh, you can arrow over and find out uh, what this means. It always shows the uh, time behind the person in front, and it also will show the time behind the leader. So the one above is the time behind the leader, and the one below is the time behind the next person in front. You'll notice in this time that there's no like three laps slash something. That's because we don't actually have you have to remember that we actually will calculate how far behind they are not only in laps but um, if they're multiple laps behind we'll give an average of what the difference is per lap and use that in the calculation so this is all estimated and calculated on the fly for you so um, that's helpful as well um, in addition in the fast column the one that's in green is the fastest lap out of all of them uh, even though Bob is in fourth place, he had the very fastest lap out of all the drivers in the race. So we're continuing on here. We're about to be complete. Uh, just a couple other things to note. Uh, in the top here, it always shows the uh, top qualifier, um, and it doesn't change with who's ever in the current round. So if you just if you want to have an idea of how people in the current race are faring to um, everyone else that's run already, you can take a look here for a quick uh, tip there. All right, the timer is almost expired, and it just is, so now we've changed to say waiting for drivers. Now keep in mind that depending on where the drivers are, that they have their own personal uh, clock to have to expire here too. So in the system, we do offer another color to show you to say, hey, they, um, they still have some time left, but they're in their very final lap, and that's orange. You can change that color in the track uh, set up over here under the race tab. Once they uh, cross one more time, they gray out, meaning they're finished. And now everyone is finished. So I'll go ahead and hit the finish button to finish the race, and I'll be all done. And that's the race screen. 
um, feel free to pay attention and and follow more videos coming up. I'll go into more detail. If you're interested, feel free to give us feedback and uh, we'll be making more videos. So see you next time.